Hi you guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel and we are here in Bonita Springs, actually Valencia Bonita, uh, where I actually am the sports director. And today I have some special guests, uh, Deco Bar, all the way from Israel, yep. but he is actually kind of moved into uh, Andy's house here in Bonita Springs. Thanks Andy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Shout out to Andy. Uh, and also we got our attorney here, Jim Nitschi. <laughs> Law firm of Jim Uh Anyways, we, what we're going to be doing today is uh, Daco is going to explain, uh, is going to talk about his beautiful return and why it's such a great return and why it works. So I hope you enjoy it. So one of the reasons why this return is so effective uh, is what, like, what are some, some of the things that you think why people you should utilize a slice return? So a slice return goes through the air a lot like slower you have more time to get to the net and into the kitchen yep. um, also it skids through the court which is very difficult for a lot of people it's harder to drop where should they stand because again a lot of the times when you play with better players one thing that you're gonna notice the serve comes a lot faster and a lot deeper and one mistake that we see is what yeah. Yeah, a lot of people stand right on the baseline when they're returning the ball, and then the ball lands here, they have no time. They take it as a half volley, very Which difficult to do. To, to create a slice. Yeah, oh, definitely very hard to create slice. You usually just pop it up, shorten the court, and then they have an easy third ball, and you don't get close to the kitchen. So a good thing, what I like to do is stand, you know, a few feet behind the baseline, get ready, stay low, and if the return is deep, I'm ready, I have time to react. If it's short, then I come in forward and get the ball. So then what are you going to look to do? So if you are back there, you're standing further behind. So one of the myths I think that people believe is because you're further behind, now you are further away from the kitchen line. So what are you looking to do when you're back there that you're going to return with that slice? What are you doing? What is your body doing? So my body is moving forward while I'm hitting the shot. If I'm staying here and they hit a deep ball, my, back, my body will go backwards. So if I'm back here, the ball lands pretty deep, but I can still go forward through the shot and into the kitchen faster than if I was standing close to the baseline. Perfect. Now let's talk about technique. What are, so for the forehand slice, what is the first thing that we're looking for here? So if I'm getting a, a forehand return, I want to hit a forehand slice. I'm usually aiming for middle or cross court, so I have, so my ball goes through the air longer. It's uh, I have more area to hit it in. I'm gonna take a nice short backswing, so the ball doesn't get behind me, and a little follow through and come in. Okay, and just to be sure, you're keeping your continental grip yes. all the way through. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, so, and then uh, as well as the follow the follow through. One of the things that we notice a lot is that people tend to think of the follow through that they have to go side to side. And then what, what happens when that happens? When you go across your body? When you go across your body, the ball will go across too. So it'll go, you'll miss it wide. It'll just get out of, out of control. So what do your paddle looks like when you're going through? So, so you... my paddle is facing where I want to hit the ball all the way through. So if I'm aiming cross court, it'll be this way through when the whole shot. When you make that contact yeah. point, yes. Mm -hmm. So at contact, that when he makes contact with the ball, wherever that paddle is facing, it's not so much about the finish, but it's when he's coming through, when he makes contact with the, with the ball, that's where that ball is going to go. Yeah. Then if it finishes over, it'll still be okay. The problem is when people tend to go here and now the paddle face is on an angle and then coming across yeah. the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, what about the back end? What does the back end look like? The back end, uh, the backswing is the same thing. Nice and simple. Don't need too much. You'll, again, you'll be late. Uh, and same thing like the forehand. When you hit the ball, when you contact the ball, you want it, the face to be where you're aiming. You do, again, you don't want to Pull you know, pull, yep. pull your body and then the ball will pull as well. So contact point, facing where you're hitting. And one very important thing that, again, uh, if we get mathematical here, if we talk about degrees, is that <laughs> uh, when Deco is hitting the ball, if you notice, his paddle is at kind of like a 45 degree angle. That's what helps. It's not one myth is that a lot of people think when they have to, to hit yeah. the slice, they think it's the chopping. Yeah, the chop with the wrist. So the wrist stays firm. 
uh, the slice comes from the ball going through the paddle. There you go. And not, you know, from, from any wristy action. It's, it comes from the, yeah, just going through the paddle. Perfect. The paddle will do the job for you. There you go, that's it. Especially the Prince paddle will do the best job for you. All right, so I'm standing a couple feet behind the baseline, slicing the ball, and I have more time to get to the net. Oh, there comes Jimbo. Jim is just too good. Oh, look at that defense. Uh, ah! Yes! All right, but because I was moving forward, I had more time to get into the net and then take the first ball from the air, which is what we want. Nice. That's Ooh. a really good return. So, yeah, a, a nice deep slice return to the middle or cross court is the best way to go if you want to get the first ball out of the air. He had to hit a perfect drop there uh, for, to get it to my feet, uh, to get it to bounce. Okay. Nice. So you see, I'm not even hitting the ball that hard. It's just a nice motion, simple, pretty deep. It's very hard to uh, get a good drop out of it. So what was really, because again, it became difficult to do a good third shot drop. Can you explain what became, why did it become so difficult? Uh, well, the ball was moving slower. It just kind of died at the end, and it was really low. So I had to really get down and try to lift it in the air. And, and the then harder you try to lift it, the higher it goes, and then he smashes it. And again, that's exactly what Daco wants. That's what he's going to get, an easier ball that he can keep the advantage instead of giving away the advantage on the first ball. So uh, can you say, so, so let's go over again. Uh, what, are, what would you say the top three advantages of hitting a slice return are? So number one is getting uh, to the kitchen uh, in time. Basically, I have more time to get into the kitchen because the ball floats through the air more. Uh, second big advantage is the skid of the ball. When it bounces, it stays low. Uh, it's harder for, the, uh, for them to hit a nice third shot. Um, and yeah, very important to stay back, stay, take a couple step back from the baseline, make sure you have enough space and enough time to really hit that slice. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't, you know, nothing th with the wrist. It's nice and simple motion. If you saw, I didn't, you know, I didn't hit it hard or anything. It's nice and smooth. You don't have to hit it really, put a lot of effort into it. Perfect. I have the beauty or the beast, Deco Bar. And I have Jim Nietzsche. Don't mess up with Jim. He's an attorney, and I know that. So anyways, thank you, Jim, for being here. And what Deco is going to be doing is covering the around the post, uh, not just uh, you know, the technique, but also uh, some of the mistakes that players make when attempting to do it. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing is uh, recognizing when is a good ball to go around the post. Ooh. Uh, you have to see that the ball is bouncing, you know, closer to the sideline yep. uh, with more pace maybe or more spin that will jump further and you'll be able to hit it around the post. I think one of the biggest things, if you notice when Deco hit that ball, he was not in a hurry. He was not rushing to meet that ball. And that's one thing that I noticed is that a lot of players, the ball comes and, and show it how like rushing, what that means. So the ball is there and they don't let the ball get actually around the post. So yeah. as a matter of fact, what you want to do is, is the ball is going to end up, I mean, when you make contact with the ball, the ball is pretty low. Yeah. So what you want to make sure it happens is that the ball gets past the post so you can go around it. So if that ball goes there, he's actually going to let the ball go and then hit it. And I know it's difficult because it tests your patience, mm -hmm. right? Because again... Yeah, you, people see the ball, oh, let's go around the post, let's go around the post. But then they go too early, pull too early, and then there's not enough space. You got to wait, really wait until it's all the way uh, around until you can hit it. So usually it's going to be pretty low. You got to wait until it's really low, uh, paddle face low, uh, so it doesn't go out, right? You don't need to hit the ball above the net. You're going be around the net. So no need to hit it to open the paddle face. Keep it nice and low. So one of the mistakes that we see is that when people are moving uh, 
on the uh, along the kitchen line they're actually cutting across which then it cuts off the angle but also it doesn't allow that ball to run all the way out you are going to end up meeting earlier so if you want to demonstrate that what are you doing as far as footwork uh, so yeah, a lot of people run to the ball when uh, they see the ball. They, they, you know, they get so excited, they run to the ball, try to cut the, cut the angle, and that's not what you need to do here. Uh, what you want to do is let the ball run, you know, stay a good bit behind it, make sure you have room to hit it, and then hit your shot around the post. Perfect. And then the paddle is really staying in front of you as yes, well, Yes, the right? paddle always in front of you. Okay, so so uh, we got Jim here, and Deco is gonna help you with uh, hitting around the post here. Let's see it, Jim. All right. Let's see. No pressure, Jim. <laughs> nice. Ooh, That's great. Oh, look at I, that! I don't need to help Jim. <laughs> so so point out what were exactly. some of the things he went, the, Jim waited uh, until the right moment where the ball was already around around the post basically so he could uh, hit around he waited until it was low nice and low he didn't rush it uh, he was behind the ball he didn't come too close to it yeah perfect and you didn't even take a big swing you really just pushed that ball out what a beauty look at that well taught it's great. <laughs> yeah of course all right so something a lot of people like to do on the forehand side is try to curve the ball around the post when it's not really the right time to do it. Uh, it's a really, you know, it's a high risk shot. Uh, I don't recommend doing it. Um, what you want to do is again, same thing like the back end. You want to wait until it's the right time to do it. Uh, you want to let the ball drop all the way uh, just to have enough, you know, enough angle to go through the, to go around the post. But no, don't try too much, you know, curving and topspin. And I think one of the things to make sure that we're on the same page here is that you're going to see a lot of pros do it. Like Deco does it, uh, I do it. I mean, you've seen probably Ben and, and mm -hmm. Kyle and a lot of, a lot of you know, great players do it. Uh, but the, the thing about it is that it is very difficult and mobility wise, you got to get on the outside of yeah. the ball. Uh, meaning that your feet got to be there and then your wrist also is coming across, which for me is difficult to do a lot of the times, especially on the backhand side. Mm -hmm. So just being aware that this is something that, yeah, it looks pretty cool and it's amazing what the ball does because you're shaping that ball around the court. Uh, but at the same time, percentage wise, it's going to be much harder yes. and you might make one, which will be pretty cool, but you're going to miss a lot more than just trying to hit flat, flatter ball. Again, I'm waiting for the right ball. Don't rush it. Oh, and, that uh, was sick. So, yeah, waiting until the right moment. It, you, see, you saw it was quite low, but there was enough space. Paddle face, flat, and there you go. Nice. Yeah. That so, was good, but, but yes, but you're, yeah. you're a little bit off balance. You're, it's harder to make that shot when you do it. You did succeed this time, but you know you might miss it in different times. You want to really make sure you're balanced when you're hitting these shots. It's, it is an offensive shot. It's, you, know, you have a small margin. You want to be you know, uh, very stable with your feet. So just uh, focus on that too. And sometimes also, as, as you play better players, you start to get that ball back. The, 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 yes. so, so let's say if you are off the court now and you're totally off balance, yeah, Deco is going to come back to, to help you if he's your partner. However, after that, you're still kind of going to be potentially, I put it there, now Deco gets that one. Now yes. you've got to be able to come back. You can't stay over there outside of the court. Exactly. Maybe the next shot. Maybe <laughs> the next shot I'll get it, but after that I need my partner back in the point. That one. Oh, nice. what the? Nice, that was good. Yeah, that was good. So you, you were stable, you didn't, you know, push off the, you know, close to the fence. And yeah, you let it drop. So, Deco, uh, if there was one pointer that you could give some players out there that are trying to do the around the post, mm -hmm. what would that be? Uh, for me, it's not rushing, not rushing the ball, making sure it goes all the way around the post until I'm hitting it. 
Uh, so yeah, really giving yourself enough space to hit it and not go for a very small margin shot. Awesome, perfect. Hi you guys, welcome back to our channel. And uh, as you can see, I have a special guest, Deco Bar, Thanks the for one having and me. only. This beautiful <laughs> face, oh <my> smiley face, <laughs> also available on dates.com. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Something like that. Or swipe right and swipe left. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, you can't, you can't keep a straight face. It's not going to happen. Uh, no, just sort of say that it's been great having you here. So practicing, giving mm -hmm. you a hard time. You trying yes. to hit me most of the time. Yes, I try. Yes. Backs off so much. It's exactly. impossible. Not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, we're just going to do a little Q&A, get to know Deco a little bit. Um, maybe some things that uh, you already know, maybe some things that you didn't. So we'll start. So right. some of the things... Uh, so when did you come uh, to Pickleball? Like when did you uh, come to the dark side? Come to the dark side, all yeah. right. So uh, I've been friends uh, with uh, Ben Johns for a while because I used to travel with uh, Colin Johns, his mm -hmm. brother, for tennis. Uh, and yeah, for a few years, for a couple of years then, Ben has been trying to, you know, uh, get at me and Colin to play some Pickleball. And we're like, you know, you keep doing that. Ooh, we'll, st we'll stay with tennis. tennis yeah. Uh, and then uh, at one point, actually pretty close to each other, both me and Colin stopped playing tennis, yeah. and we were like, "Yeah, sure, we'll we'll come for we'll come for one tournament. We'll see how it is." Uh, then we played for like a few days before uh, practice. Then we came to play the tournament, and we got wrecked. <laughs> we got destroyed. Um, I play. I remember playing you a game of singles. And you beat me 11-0. That was and the like, first time we met. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, you probably yeah, thought, who's, who's this guy? I can't can't, uh, can't I, really play. Uh, but yeah, it, so we got wrecked. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and then we kind of got hooked. We're like, oh, we, we want to do this again. So uh, that was in May in Atlanta Open. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, in July, I think it was July, we played another couple tournaments in California. Uh, both me and Colin together again. We went with Ben. We practiced. Um, we did a little bit better. Not great, uh, but it was every day. It was just a lot more, just more fun. We kind of got the hang of the game. Kind of know what we're doing a little bit more. Uh, not getting hit every point, um, and yeah, it got addicted then. Cool. Uh, so what? So you talk about tennis. So what yes. were you doing before then? So I played uh, professional tennis. Yep. Basically, I started playing tennis when I was n nine, nine and a half. Uh, it slowly became very competitive for me. Uh, I loved it. I traveled for many years in the futures and challenger tours, which was a grind, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, I liked it. Uh, unfortunately, I had to quit uh, a few years ago because of injuries. Uh, and that's when I started playing started tennis. Yeah, uh, pickleball. Start, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Well, but that's but that's something that. I think a lot of tennis players, because I know I uh, I was one, uh, still kind of am. Uh, but but coming into pickleball, that at first you think, oh, this is going to be so easy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it's not that no, easy because no. especially when you play more skilled players, exactly. your big strokes and your unnecessary movements yeah. show really yeah. and get exposed. Yeah. But then that's what also brings you back. Because you then, oh my gosh, I gotta get better at this yeah. game, and you you think, oh, you, the silly game. The silly game. You, you feel like you're gonna play a lot better, uh, but yeah. When I remember, you know, before we started playing, we we're like, yeah, this is gonna be easy. We're gonna, Colin, you know, Colin, yeah. I remember. I remember. Uh, we were probably gonna do well, and you know, we got wrecked in our first few tournaments, uh, and rightly so. Uh, we, you know, had all our tennis instincts and stuff, yep. and it it took a while to to adjust, and you know. Get but the, I think that's get why it becomes mentality. so intriguing because yeah. you're just like, oh my gosh, court is so much smaller, mm -hmm. and you know it's it's a pad, a wiffle ball. With, there's so many similarities, but at the same time, you have the kitchen that adds a yeah. little different uh, aspect to it. And, yeah. Uh, I think that's what a lot of tennis players they say like, I gotta get this, I gotta yeah. figure this out, mm -hmm. and. And that's it's very intriguing. There's lots of little tactics and lots of lot, a lot to figure out, especially at first. Uh, and yeah, it's just and a lot of fun. And then you just keep coming yeah, back Yeah, keep coming more. back, 
just got to get better. You got to do better. There you go. There you go. And then, then, you, you, just, then you get hooked. Then and you that's get it. hooked. There no, you go. No way back. <laughs> exactly. And now, so so now you've been playing. And so I've been, yeah, I've been playing for a bit over two years now. Well, yeah, a bit over two years now, on and off. I uh, go back and forth to Israel. Uh, so I'm at home. Unfortunately, I don't have anyone to play with, which is a big reason why I stayed now here uh, to practice with you some. Uh, and, uh, and so what do you do back home? So back home I uh, go to school, I study economics and entrepreneurship. I have uh, a little bit more than one year left. Uh, right now everything's online, so that's helpful. Uh, helpful. It gives me the opportunity to practice a little bit more. Yep. Um, and yeah, hopefully tournaments will start soon and we can get back. Yeah, get back to it. Well, mm -hmm. So so now uh, what are Again, you're going to school, uh, yes. but what would be like, uh, you know, a year from now, what mm -hmm. would be like Deco picturing the future, the short term plan, what Sh would it be? Short term plan is to finish school yep. and uh, hopefully after that come to the US, play more pickleball, more tournaments, uh, do more trips and yeah, uh, that's you know, that's what I'm hoping for. And talking about trips, <laughs> so the, what's what's big part of your guys' well, explain. Yeah, I'll let so, you explain. All right, so yes, we have uh, me and Ben Johns, we have uh, uh, pickleball getaways, we have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of vacations uh, overseas, uh, and we'll have some uh, also in the U.S. Uh, so yeah, our next one is, uh, we were supposed to have a couple now in Portugal. We we're supposed to be in be Portugal in, yeah. right now. Yeah, Yeah, we're still stuck with each other. Oh, but <laughs> gosh. <laughs> uh, Just not in another country. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we were supposed to be uh, together now in Portugal, uh, but that uh, trip got Actually, uh, yeah. postponed, postponed for, for next, for year, next yeah. year. Um, so yeah, we have that in June and July, two trips. Uh, we have a trip uh, to Mexico in January. And we have other trips planned. Uh, we'll see how everything is with COVID. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, so when I come to the US, that's the plan to do more trips, to play more pickleball, more tournaments, uh, do some teaching. Uh, so that's my short term plan. Yep. And as far as you getting into the sport a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. what you see happening you know, now, uh, so what would you like to see improve as far as the pickleball circuit goes. Okay. Um, yeah. A uh, big thing is is ranking, really, because mm -hmm. uh, there's no real ranking right now. There's a few, you know, people who do kind of their own rankings, yep. but nothing official. official. Yep. There's ratings, but they're not always accurate, or it's yep. hard to tell who's, you know, above who. Um, and for seeding. And too. for yeah, yeah, it's very difficult for seeding. Each tournament, you, I mean, I can play a tournament after the other. One, I'll be seated one. One, I'll be seated five. Yep. It's uh, very difficult. Yep. Um, so that is something that will be great to have. Just you know, to have some order. Yep. Um, which is something I. It looks like uh, the new tours that are happening, the PPA and APP, them. that mm -hmm. they're uh, starting to do their own rankings, yep. which will hopefully be. Uh, be good and then it will be easier uh -huh. um, so yeah and the tours are a big thing they're gonna help a, help a lot you know put order and For put sure. more more tournaments in uh, and really make it more more a professional sport because until now you know it, it's it's getting there but it's a little bit you know a lot of amateur stuff in it and it's getting better each year and it's great to see uh, more money is getting in more sponsors so that's basically what I kind of want to see more of, uh, just it getting more professional in every direction. Yeah, um, for sure. And it looks like it's going that way. So. No, it, uh, it definitely, I mean, from when I, I started playing to now, uh, it's amazing, the, the, the mm -hmm. huge difference. Uh, but it's awesome and exciting, yeah. and I can't wait for the future. Uh, because again, then more players like yourself will mm -hmm. come uh, and then the game will just be even better in the sense of being competitive and uh, it just brings, always with new players, it yeah. brings uh, more, it's more interesting. Yeah. And, and it's better not, matches, oh my goodness, uh, better yeah. draws. I remember even uh, two years ago in my first tournament and my first big tournament, the draws weren't that packed. Oh right now goodness. the level is, even two years after, it's that much harder. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you, there's no, you know, easy matches anymore. You first from the first match, you got to be there, otherwise you're out. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, so yeah, absolutely. it's good. So yeah, it's exciting. So uh, 
Well, I hope that all your wishes come true, right? <laughs> all of them. Uh, yeah. But I know that also I want to make sure that I give you the opportunity for some shout out, sh shout outs, yes. shout outs. I can't even speak. <laughs> shout outs. So you've been here for now. Yes, I've <laughs> been here for three weeks now, around three weeks. Uh, I've been staying at Andy Jones's house. Thanks a lot, Andy. I really appreciate all your help. You're amazing. Uh, you are amazing. The best. Uh, I really can't thank you enough. Um, and thanks a lot for Simone for all the practice and, you know, beating me up a little bit and running me around. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, yeah. So thanks a lot for everything, for your help. Uh, I would like to thank Prince. There you go. Uh, yeah. Prince Pickleball for the great paddles helped me you know really travel and get from the from Israel to here it's been a massive help uh, and yeah Jigsaw Health for keeping me alive in the in these conditions because <laughs> it's brutal here exactly. uh, the humidity so I couldn't doubt it without their products um, because if it, it's fun to feel good but it's it, horrible to feel bad it, that's, yes, that's, that's, exactly. that's the worst. I think that's what people don't realize when you come to Florida this time of the year. Uh, how many shirts are you going to? Oh my to God, uh, this is my sixth shirt, I think, today. Uh, not kidding. And it's true. Uh, <laughs> I, I watch him just go through shirts. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah. it's so humid, but it's fun. It's a great way to get in shape. Uh, and yeah, you get Simone here. Can't really beat that, so. <laughs> yeah, you can, but <laughs> we'll leave it for another for, day. For practice, can't, for practice. I mean, it's good day. practice. <laughs> She's okay, but. She's um, average. Working on my game now, <laughs> but anyways. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks and a lot for anything, having me. Anything that you want to add uh, to out there, to the, the world of the world? A pickleball, <laughs> to the cyber world of pickleball? No, if you never tried it, go ahead. It's a lot of fun, even if it looks a little bit silly at first. The name, you know, and everything. There you go. It's, it's so fun, uh, addicting. You won't regret it. And if they want to follow you, like in, in yeah, yeah, so, or the pickleball. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you want to follow me, uh, just on Facebook, on Instagram, Deckel Bar, you'll find me. Uh, if you want to follow our trips, uh, Pickleball Getaways, either on our website, on Facebook as well, or on Instagram. And yeah, come on a trip. It'll be fun. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Simone will be on some. <laughs> I know. I know. We'll see. Wherever, wherever we go, I hope we go somewhere. Though that'll be nice. Yes. Uh, but anyways, as long as we get again for now, we gotta we gotta stay we gotta yes, stay safe for exactly. now. Exactly. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for Thanks, being Simone. a part of it. And uh, again, if you have any questions for Deco, feel free to stalk him on, on <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, all of it. Uh, and uh, he'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. All everything. of them. Everything and anything you can think of. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. I can't wait for that. <laughs> uh, but anyways, again, thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere in here. There, maybe. Right there. Right there. You see it? Right there. Got it. <laughs> Thanks again. Bye. Shut up! <laughs> Was that rolling? Ma! The yes. meatloaf! <laughs> oh, yeah. Ma, the meatloaf! I never know what she's doing there. I know. There you go. Perfect.